I got injected against polio in 1951 when I was two. And the day after, I was playing in the field with my brothers, one of brothers, and I fell. And I couldn't get up, and my brother came into the house, and that's when the discovery of polio. And I was brought to the Swinford Fever Hospital at the time. The building is still there, it's a source of work right now. I remember when I came out of the for the I had to learn to walk again. And I was told by my mother how to have a kid's girl, young girl's pram. And the, the, the district nurse, which is the other day, not carrying put stones into the pram so I could chip over when I was walking with it. I was walking up and down the footpath, the house with it, with, 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 with the pram down to walk. I was never told by my parents that I got the polio from the injection, but I was told, I was told about 1987, I was told by an old man, that's right, 1989, and there's a man Back to the road, Sean Gaffney, painter, told me he had remembered when I got the polio and how I got it. He was 10 years of age. So I tried, through a solicitor, to make a claim against the government and against the American government and against the doctor for getting that polio upon that injection. Well, he told me there was no health board at the time and there was no records kept. Last cause. <laughs> I had my first operation in Galway in 1956 on my ankle, whatever as far I don't know was the time. And I was required in Madden Park and when I was going home I was put into an ambulance and I had wooden crutches. I saw there was at the time. And I was brought to Castle Bar at twelve o'clock at night. And I had the driver say to his poor that we were not bringing this child to practice and we put him in here. Where they put me into the workhouse. So I had to walk in with big double latch doors, spring doors on the workhouse. I remember it well. And walk in on the crutches and cast them my leg and my foot up. And there was no stairs of walking heel that thing. I walk up the passageway to the very top of the, the, the big massive room. And all masses is on the floor. And patients lying and sleeping and growth and everything. I up to the very top one put in a masses on the floor. When I slept on I then walked the next morning and I got a bind egg and the slices of bread I got were so big I couldn't get my mouth to small mug around. <laughs> but then it coming in nine o'clock and the shop came around to, to go to the patients. And no man walked up to me and handed me a bar of chocolate that was there. Oh man, who was there? That was nice. And then Dan Burns came and brought me home. Oh well, music's been my centre down the years, you know. There's no day in my life without music. Pops is out of music. Nothing back from the television verse of music. I remember some years ago, if I didn't play a CD, I played a tape. If I didn't play a tape, I played a vinyl. If I didn't play a vinyl, I played an ASAC. I went to see 
in 2003, there was a scandal at Deep Purple in Point Depot. They, they really separated the men from the boys. Music is good for anyone. It's good for someone who is depressed. Music is good. And I don't believe these tapes that play for the person and all these CDs that have for music for the person. And give a good blast of the spirit or something, that led me more. Yeah. I got caught eight legs. I called many things when I got caught every time. But mostly what people called me, she just had a DJ and was Billy the Kid. They'll say the kid is coming. <laughs> <laughs>